achieved. What up, everybody, and welcome to Studio Day Heffery Day Quarantine, where we got some weird lighting with the side window and the sun, and, well, maybe we'll have to do a better job of creating a studio. Uh, I want to talk about the Cowboys with you today. There's a couple of things that I think are very worthwhile to talk about, and we'll get into the Team Tank update and where the Cowboys are still picking forth. What a wonderful weekend. It turned out to be a wonderful weekend. The Cowboys win a game, the Andy Dalton revenge game. You can't tell Andy Dalton you can't go beat the Bengals. He's got to go beat the Bengals. So Andy Dalton wins the Andy Dalton revenge game. Sorry, haven't been out of the shower long, and this long hair is something i got to deal with. But I won't cut it. Uh, Andy Dalton wins the revenge game, right? And the Cowboys don't move at all. In terms of their draft pick, they're still number four because the Eagles won and the Chargers won. So it worked out great. What a great, what a great tankathon yet team got to have success weekend. That's what we're, that's what we're pulling for. So that was great. Cowboys are still sitting there in fourth. Andy Dalton got to beat his old team. Classy move by the Bengals, by the way, to introduce it as Andy Dalton and the Dallas Cowboys. So that was neat. Neat for Andy. You could see how much it meant to him and the team wanted to win for him. And that's cool. That's great. That's wonderful. Uh, what's also wonderful is it's not like the team actually played well. The Bengals just happened to fumble their first three possessions, which is absurd. Um, so whatever, right? I want to talk about the things I want to talk about. Cowboys beat the Bengals. That's cool. Cowboys didn't move back at all in draft. They're currently dead balls tied with the Chargers when it comes to record and strength of schedule. So what keeps the Cowboys in fourth and the Chargers in fifth? Not totally sure, but the strength of schedule will determine that. And right now it's a tie and the Cowboys are listed as the fourth overall pick. Two things I do want to talk about from that game though. Number one, Amari Cooper's starting to, uh, he's starting to quiet the, the haters and the doubters, I think, or maybe not. You tell me. But Amari Cooper, I think the book on Amari Cooper coming into this year had a lot to do with what happens in road games, what happens as the season goes along, what happens in big games, and there's not any big games this year for him to do anything in. But Amari Cooper is on track for, is he on track for 100 catches? Right around. And he's going to have 11, 1,200 yards again. He's going to have six or seven touchdowns, and he's going to do it without a good quarterback. So... A salute to Amari Cooper, who in the road games, Bengals was a road game, Ravens was a road game. So Bengals, four catches for 51 and a touchdown. Ravens, five catches for 43 and a touchdown. Those aren't massive numbers. But he's the guy on the offense that even when they can't really get anything going, he's the guy that's most consistently doing his job really well. He just keeps getting open. Keeps being good after the catch. Keeps catching the ball when it's thrown to him. So, Amari Cooper is, to me, having his most impressive season. And I know that for some reason the pendulum kind of swung against Amari Cooper in the court of public opinion over the last year or so. But feel free to come on back now. Come on back. Amari has had a really impressive season to me. And all these different road games. Seattle, nine catches for 86 yards. Rams, 10 for 81 Cardinals, 7 for 79 and a touchdown. Nope, that was a home game. Washington, 7 for 80. Uh, He did have an at Philly where he had one catch for five yards. But outside of that, Vikings, 6 for 81. He's really just had two games this year where he wasn't uh, super productive. And that was a home game against the Giants where he was 2 for 23 and a road game against the Eagles where he was 1 for 5. But outside of that, dude's been uh, the model of consistency on this Cowboys team. So a salute to Amari Cooper. The other thing I want to point out is box score wasn't huge yesterday, but this may be the best thing to come out of this season, or maybe the most surprising thing to come out of this season. Dalton Schultz can play. Dalton Schultz, the box score is just three catches for 34 yards, but I mean, week in and week out, he is making, he's making catches um, he's being sure-handed. He's being a decent route runner. Maybe I should even give him more credit than that. Maybe pretty good route runner. So you went from thinking, okay, without Blake Jarwin, this team's got nothing at tight end to thinking, hey, when Blake Jarwin gets back, you got two good tight ends. So Dalton Schultz, Amari Cooper, to me, those were a couple of the big positives uh, that are coming out of that game. And I know, I don't know, well, I don't know if everybody saw it, 
But I know a lot of people saw the play where Jalen Smith is running into the middle of the line, and then there's a blocker, and then the running back is coming right at him, and he does a spin move to go way over here and open the hole for the running back to run through. I do want to point out that outside of that, Jalen played well. Two weeks in a row, Jalen Smith has played well. So I don't know if there was maybe some uh, some some truth to the idea that Jalen is playing for his job right now and that they would consider releasing him in the offseason, even though it wouldn't save him much money just to get out of that contract. Last couple of weeks, Jalen's played pretty well. So if I'm going to kill the guy when he doesn't play well, uh, I will give him his credit when he does play well. And I believe that he did. Hell, Tyrone Crawford showed up this week. Tank Lawrence was good. Um... Who else defensively? Let me get my noty note notes. Let me get my noty note notes. Jordan Lewis was good, so that's nice. Um, Dorrance Armstrong, when he played, was pretty good. I think outside of that, everybody was okay. But, yeah, Jalen, Tank, Crawford, Lewis. Good job, guys. So, there you go. There's some Cowboy recap stuff. Some stuff. Let me go to your mailbag. Your mailbags, I want to point out, have turned into pretty much all draft questions. <laughs> and I'm cool with that. I'm totally cool with that. Uh, Scotty said, Dallas, we can't get out of our own way. How far did we drop in the draft? You did not drop in the draft. You're still number four overall at the moment. The big devil dog. Jeff, can you tell me what approximate round we'd have to trade down to, acquiring at least another second and third rounder to still be able to take – Patrick Sertan, that's an Alabama cornerback in the first round, and finally get a starting quality safety with a second rounder. Um, Yeah, I think if you want a starting safety, then you should be way on board with Captain Trade Down, who moves from number four or five, wherever the Cowboys end up, trades it, somebody comes and takes a quarterback, uh, and then you end up picking. But if you want to take Patrick Sertan, you might have to stay put. Because that's one of the things I'm learning as I watch more and more of the guys in this draft class is it's not getting better. It's making me more and more think, okay, got to make sure I get Sir Tanner Farley or J.C. Horn. Um, so I'm comfortable with the top three corners in this class. So I think you could comfortably move down to 10 or 12 and get at least one of them to be available. And then you probably need to use a second rounder on a safety. And I'm struggling to find you a safety. But I'll get there. I'll find one. Uh, last night I watched – who did I watch? Both the TCU guys. Uh, who else did I watch? Javon Holland, the Oregon guy. Uh, but I'm, work, I'm working my way through the safeties, and I don't love any of them. To be fair, I'm watching the 2019 tape, so I still got to get some 2020 TCU tape to, to see what they're looking like there. But – my favorite guy that I watched yesterday out of the safeties was actually our Darius Washington, the five foot eight TCU other safety. He was my favorite, but it's on 2019 tape to so 2020. Could see some strides. The thing about uh, the other TCU safety, Dane Brugler's top safety, I, all I remember is that the way I was saying it initially is wrong. It's not Trevon Morig, Mor Merig. Maybe it's Merig. That's it, Merig. Uh, he looks the part. I just thought that his teammate Washington is quicker to react. He's better at letting the quarterback take him to the ball. He's more twitched up. Uh, so I actually like the little TCU safety better on their 2019 tape. But we'll get there. Uh, either way, you want to trade down in the first round so that you have an extra second round pick, and you can bookmark that maybe for safety or an extra third-round pick that you can bookmark for safety. You might just want to bring back Xavier Woods. I know nobody wants to hear that right now. <laughs> Austin, he says, Trevon Merrig, I like him a lot. What are your thoughts? Thanks, Jeff. I like the way he moves. I don't love the way he played in 2019, but I think he absolutely, like, he looks the part. He's fluid. Um, he moves really well. He can recover. But I don't think he's a top-tier athlete. I don't think he's top-tier instinctual. But again, I want to give these guys their real due by waiting until I have 2020 tape to have official stances on some of these safeties because he's not an opt-out. There's 2020 tape that I'm going to be able to watch. And I know that people like him. For the moment, the guy that I watched, I would take somewhere in the mid to late second, early third. That's about where I would put him. But I have not watched his 2020 tape. 
Mark, hey Jeff, love the video. Subscribed and notifications are turned on. Thank you. Since you watched Ojalari from Georgia, Aziz Ojalari, Edge from Georgia, and I like him. First rounder. I was wondering if you noticed anything from his teammate Jordan Davis. He's a big boy at defensive tackle who I like in the third, maybe. Not yet. It's still December. That's important. It's still December. The NFL draft is like four and a half months away. Okay? Don't yell at me. RS, is Micah Parsons a guy that can transform the defense, in your opinion? In my opinion, he cannot do that on as a rookie. Uh, and it's very rare that a linebacker transforms a defense anyway. But uh, I think that there is a chance that he develops into a pro bowler and potentially an all-pro guy because of the physical tools that he has. Parsons is a lot of fun. I think there's going to be a lot of talk about the Cowboys and Parsons in this draft. And if they ultimately picked him, I would not praise them for the pick because I think there's a couple of things. Off-ball linebacker in the top five doesn't make me real happy. And him as a prospect in the top five doesn't make me real happy. But then if I could separate myself from that and just say, hey, the prospect Micah Parsons, he's on the football team you cover, I'd be like, okay, that's good. He can help your team for sure. So I wouldn't love the value, but yeah, I'd like to have Parsons on the Cowboys. Jackson Bernard, hey Jeff, 21 percenter here, had a question about the draft. I personally think the O-line could be a bigger need than we think. If Washington's going to be our biggest competitor in the division, we got to have an answer for their D-line. If we have a chance at Panay Sewell, I think we should take it. Of course, Panay Sewell, Oregon offensive tackle. He'll be a top five pick. I think Cincy will probably take him at three. But the one thing, if I only get one thing across this week to the people, it's going to be this. Panay Sewell is an incredible prospect. Make sure you mention Rashawn Slater, the Northwestern offensive tackle, in the same breath because he's amazing too. There is not one stud offensive line prospect at the top of this thing. There's two. Don't forget Rashawn Slater, Northwestern. And I think both of them can absolutely play tackle. Sewell's got the longer arms, so there's going to be some teams that are like, I don't know about Slater. Maybe move him to guard. But he's a kick-ass left tackle. Ask Chase Young. Chase Young got blocked by Rashawn Slater a lot when he played Northwestern in 2019. Um, And uh, let's see here. W.M. Tyler Dallas. Say for each of your top three picks, the highest player on your board is a corner. Do you take three corners? I'd take two. I was talking about that last night. I know you've got no problem in the first round taking Patrick Sertan at Alabama, Caleb Farley at Virginia Tech, J.C. Horn at South Carolina. Take one of those guys with your uh, first pick, and then they're in the second round. If you wanted to take Asante Samuel Jr., which I don't know if the Cowboys will because he's small, but if you want to take Asante Samuel Jr., let's go. Pony up. Let's do it. Uh, Yeah, because you need corners. You need corners like a mofo. Uh, Where is the other guy who DM'd me something? And it was a good idea, and I said, ooh, maybe I'll talk about that tomorrow. I'll find it. Dun, 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 dun. People are asking me about players like Patrick Jones, the edge from Pitt. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm trying to watch some Pitt today. I'm trying to watch some Pitt today. Come on, man. Somebody DM'd me, and I was like, oh, yeah, man, that's a good question. Let me talk about it tomorrow. And then I didn't because I can't find it. So if that was you, message me again. <laughs> Oh, here it is. I mentioned this in the comments. This is from uh, Jesse. If safety isn't good, would, could you address safety and defensive tackle and free agency or trade? That's something we might have to get ready for as Cowboy observers is they might have to find a way to free up a little bit of money to address either safety or defensive tackle and free agency because so far, as I'm working my way through these guys, I'm not loving too many of them. So, yes, you might need to find a way in free agency to, hey, Xavier Woods, you want to come on back on the cheap? Or uh, interior defensive tackle is actually going to be a good free agency class. So there's going to be some big boys. If you want to get a big boy in free agency, there's going to be some of those out there for you if you have money to spend, which the Cowboys don't. But you can always make, make some money to spend. There's some risk involved, but you can always do it. 
All right, make sure you're subscribed to youtube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh. I appreciate every single one of you that is. I love you. You're my favorite. Uh, leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. Make sure you're listening to 105.3 The Fan, 2 to 7, G-Bag Nation on your home with the Cowboys. And check in 105.3thefan.com. I love you.